Shreveport City Councilwoman Lavette Fuller here for a little bit. Hey, Miss Lavette, welcome back to Keel. How you do? Uh, how are you this morning? I'm all right, but I'll tell you this. I used to say I'm not dipping in the Botox fund as a way to say I'm not worrying about it because worrying causes wrinkles. I'm starting to look my age, but let me tell you this. I think I'm going to have to get the Botox to control my facial expressions mm-hmm. because I've got a meme off going on on my page right now from a picture KTBS took of me at that meeting on Monday where I'm looking so mean and so mad. So I went ahead and said, y'all can go ahead and make some memes out of this picture. That, that, it's an interesting point you make. And I think if Councilman Nicholson or Butcher or any of the others were here, other than maybe Bowman, they would say this job, and you guys are the newbies, you're the new guys, that this mm-hmm. job is so stressful in only 100 days that we all need Botox. Oh, my gosh, that's a lot of stress. No, they don't need Botox. They already look old. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. So there's I was a young and cute back in January. <laughs> there's a new policy in place, a new three hundred million dollar policy, and we're only paying nine hundred thousand dollars for this one. What a deal. So you feel all it's 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 you're calm again, right? All cuddly about it. Look, I uh, I just saw an email that the uh, administration has decided to go ahead and pay the commission. Oh, 250 grand. Yeah. And I mean, it's within their rights to do it, so that's what they did. But yeah, I just saw my email. It came through at like 6.30 this morning. Are we still Damn. underinsured today? We are. We have um, almost adequate insurance, but they are going to be adding those layers of insurance to get us up to the $815 million. So pardon me, so we're um, going to keep paying more. Yeah, we're paying more. We're the, gonna, the we're nine gonna, we, the nine hundred thousand dollar cost is going to be the cost, and that doesn't include the uh, the Sykes Commission, right? Right. And the thing is, this is why you go out for the transparency and the request for proposals and the request for qualifications. This is the reason that we think that's a better way to do this. Um. You, you get to see transparently what all of the offers were and pick the best one. Um, you pick the person that can get you, that can negotiate the best deal for you. And we don't have that right now, in my humble opinion. Lavette Fuller, city councilwoman, I saw the mayor tell you guys the reason we made the change is we were going to save money and involve minority participation. Was he lying to you? Did he think that's what he really had done? Is he incompetent? Damn. Listen, I'm not, I'm not driving around his body, so I don't know what's going on in his brain, but I would like to believe that he was um, trying to be sincere, you know? Um, he brought us, the, the Third Millennium is a minority-operated company. They're minorities in New Orleans, so mm-hmm. in fact... Um, that was something that a constituent, Craig Lee, brought up, and I'll double down on it. You know, we've got local people here that are minority insurance agents that are very good at what they do. And if they do not necessarily have the capacity to do this level of dealing with the municipality, then there might have been an opportunity to have them partner with someone that did have the capacity so that they can actually start learning those ropes and keep that money in our local economy. See, but I'm not. But the thing is, and even then, there still needed to be the 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 benefit of the transparent process, so that everyone had an opportunity to make their offer. Chief Administrative Officer uh, Officer Sharika Fields Jones said at the council meeting on Monday, and she sort of maintained the stance that. She was under the impression that we had the same coverage all along. Um, And Aaron has requested all the emails and stuff pertaining to that. Do you know anything more about that? Can you shed any further light on that statement? Um, My understanding is that she, that, that has been her consistent statement to the audit department, that her understanding only started shifting when she was working with our audit department. I don't know if people realize that the internal auditor for the city is that department is under the purview of the city council. 
our checks and balances are continual, and they're continual under um, the stewardship of Miss Lennon. Um, I can't say more than that because, but, okay, I'll say this. I trust Jerica. She, if she's telling us this, I, I believe her. I am inclined to believe that she was in the dark about this. Now, part of it is that the initial conversation started when she was still the deputy CAO. And she, it was not within her purview to know. She had no oversight over that. In fact, no one in the previous administration, including the CAO, knew because all of these things were going on directly with the risk management department. And that might be the way that things have always been done, but how can we really know? Because we hadn't changed this in 20 years. Mm. I had asked the question, sort of a rhetorical, a rhetorical question earlier this morning. And I'll sort of throw it out, and you can respond to any or all parts as as you see fit. My question mm-hmm. was, who first saw the $50 million policy and said, that ain't right? Did they tell anybody? And if it weren't for the city auditor's report, would any of this ever come out? Would it have just been kept a secret? That last thing you said, I think that, that is what, I think that what I said at the meeting on Monday is that if it weren't for the oversight that we implemented through legislation and the fact that the, that our auditor caught this, we wouldn't know about it until something bad happened. The council's not getting off unscathed on this. You've got critics. You've got critics saying that you guys didn't ask the right questions. You know, nobody said how much coverage do we have now as opposed to last year. Could you have done things better? You know, um, <laughs> what will we do? And let's rewind this tape over what we've been talking about for the last three months. We've been talking about trash. We've been completely distracted by a trash fee. I'm not making excuses. I'm just reminding you that it's not like we were all sitting around eating bonbons. Mm-hmm. Now, the moment that it came to us that something had shifted in our insurance, I believe we did start asking the right questions. And the thing is, we asked the right the questions through our auditing department. We've done, we, this is what I consider due diligence. We started investigating from the moment that we, we, we learned that the insurance had gone topsy-turvy sideways. The moment that we realized that we, that, a shift that happened from one company to another and that it might be causing, if not huge economic issues, at least controversy, we did, we started doing our job. Do you feel and our like job you, is to investigate and we're still not done with that investigation. Do you feel like you were lied to? That's such an emotional thing to ask about. Um, I feel like we were we were given a red flag that is leading to us investigating harder. We're not done with this. We we are we're really looking back all the way to what was signed and when it was signed and who signed it. That goes back to possibly before we were all sworn in. And then those implications are even bigger. I'm not worried about I'm not worried about who do I feel like I was lied to? I wanna see when the disingenuous statements actually happen and what do the consequences need to be for anything that happened that was not above board. 